Hello grade 10s, in this video we're going to be looking at some transverse waves, past paper questions. I've taken this from a variety of grade 10 formal, final, um, past papers, so you don't want to miss me going over these questions. I show you how we mark, and as a teacher that marks up to matric level, I know exactly what you need to do to get full marks. So, you don't want to miss those teacher tips, so keep watching to the end. Let's jump right in with the first question. So they give me a section of a wave. And what's very important to understand is that they give me two things on this diagram. They give me a point A, they give me a point B, and they're showing me that the distance that, well, from A to B, they say that takes X seconds. They're not giving me the time. We're probably going to need to work that out, but that's okay. They also give me a distance on the diagram. So they're saying from this trough, which is the lowest point on the wave here, to this trough is 0 0.3 meters. So the distance between two consecutive troughs is 0, 0,3 meters. They also give me the frequency of the wave, which is very, very useful. And we know frequency is F. First of all, 2.1.1. Is the above wave transverse or is it longitudinal? You will tell me that it is transverse. Looks like a transverse wave. Remember, transverse waves are like ripples in a pond, ocean waves. We op often represent them like this. Longitudinal waves, those are often represented in a slightly different way. We will often see them represented like this one over here. I have done a video on past papers for longitudinal waves, if you want to check that out in the link in the box. But this one is a transverse wave. Although transverse and longitudinal, they're both mechanical waves. Remember, they both need a medium to travel through. Calculate the speed of the wave. Now, how do I calculate speed? What is speed? Speed is represented by the symbol V. So I'm going to say V question mark. That's what I am going to be looking for. Now you do need to know your formulas, grade 10. This is very, very, very important. And these are the formulas that are given to you on your formula sheet or on your data sheet. You get this um, with every single test you do, every single final exam, you should have this data sheet and during your term test. So that shouldn't be a problem. So you can see that in order to calculate the speed of the wave, I'm going to be using that formula over there. So looking for speed. Now looking at the formula, we know we need frequency and we need wavelength. The frequency was given to us. That's lovely. The frequency is 2.5 hertz. It must be in hertz. But I still need wavelength. Now remember, the wavelength is the distance between two consecutive points in phase on a wave. And as we mentioned here, this is a trough and this is a trough. Those are in phase. These are consecutive troughs, which means one after the other. And they give me that distance of 0, 0,3 meters. Therefore, my wavelength is 0, 0,3 meters. Nice and easy. So how you do this is you write your formula first. That will get you a mark. You substitute into your formula. So you put your values in. That will get you a mark. And then you work out your final answer. And don't forget to include your units. And that will get you your third and final mark. So my third and final mark is 0, 0,75 meters per second. If you leave out your unit, you don't get a mark. If you don't write your formula, you don't get that mark. You need to substitute. Show me that you're substituting. Then question 2.1.3 is slightly more difficult. They want the time x between points A and points B on the graph. And that is worth three marks. So. When we are working out time on a graph, it has to do with what we call period, okay? So, just so you can be reminded, I have done videos on this, but the period is the time taken for one wavelength to complete. So, the period would be between A and that point over here. That would be the period, but they're not asking for that. They're asking for the time between this point here and this point here. So the first thing that I want to do is work out how many waves occur between those two points. Well, we, we already said that from here, from crest to crest, that's one wave. So I'm going to write here one wave. If that's one wave, the second wave would end up here. Although in this question, it doesn't go that high. It stops over here. So if that's one wave, I hope it makes sense that this is a half a wave. So, so far we've got one wave and we've got a half a wave. And if this green is a half a wave, what would this little piece be over here? 
I hope you can see that that would be a quarter of a wave. So we've got one and a half plus a quarter of a wave. It's one wave, one full wave, and three quarters of a wave. That's basically what we have. Because if we had an extra little quarter, just this little extra piece over here, then it would be one, two waves. But it's not. We've got 1.75 waves being represented on this diagram from A to B. Okay? If that confuses you, maybe you want to look at it like this. That's one quarter. That's two quarters. That's three quarters. That's four quarters. So four out of four quarters, that's one wave. Then we start counting again. That's another quarter. That's two quarters. That's three quarters. So we've got one, two, three, four quarters. In other words, a whole wave. So that's one wave. And one, two, three quarters. So one wave and three quarters or 1,75 waves. Okay, cool. You might be like, Mama, okay, I understand that from A to B, there's 1,75 waves. But why on earth do we care about that? Because remember, we want the time that it took to go from A to B. So from A to B, how long did that take? And when we're talking about time in the context of waves, we do need to work with period. So how do I work out the period? If I know the frequency and we were told the frequency is 2.5 hertz, if I know the frequency is 2.5 hertz, I can work out the period by using this formula. Period is equal to 1 over frequency. So the period is equal to 1 over 2.5. So the period 1 over 2.5 is 0, 0,4 seconds. Now remember what I told you about period. Period is the time it takes for one wave to pass. One wave. But I don't have one wave. I have 1,75 waves. Therefore, time x, you take the number of waves for time x, which is from here to here, that is 1.75, and you times it by the period, which is 0, 0,4 waves. And that 1,75 times 0, 0,4 is 0, 0,7 seven seconds so it takes 0, 0,4 seconds to do one wave and then it takes 0, 0,3 seconds to do the rest of the wave the three-quarter wave 0, 0,7 seconds so the method basically is work out how many waves you have for your your distance or your time so for x seconds there's 1.5 waves you multiply the number of waves by the period of the wave if you're looking for time in seconds because periods measured in seconds that is slightly more difficult, but I hope that that explanation has helped. Here's a multiple choice question to switch things up. The maximum displacement of a particle from its equilibrium position. So remember, equilibrium position is this line over here. The maximum displacement from its equilibrium position is referring to this, and that is the amplitude. Another multiple choice question. If the velocity of the wave remains constant, something increases when the wavelength decreases? This is a very common question or a similar type of question that you will get in multiple choice questions. And they want you to work with the relationship between the variables mentioned in this question. So we've got velocity and we've got wavelength. So what formula do you know that relates all of these together? Well, it'll be this formula over here. So we've got velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength. They're saying if, a, if the velocity of the wave remains constant, so that means it stays the same. Something will increase when wavelength decreases. So if this goes down, what will have to increase? And it's kind of obvious if you look at the, the formula. Frequency will have to increase. So your answer is A, frequency. Because if this number goes down, this number has to go up in order to keep the speed constant. Another question. So we've got the diagram below represents a transverse wave. They give me the frequency. That's great. So we know F is 1.5 hertz. They tell me 
the wave is moving to the right, so it's going that way. They give me this distance here between A and C, and they also give me this uh, vertical distance between here and here is 20 centimeters. Our first question is a definition. Now remember grade 10's definitions and signs are important. You need to memorize your definitions. You need to get them correct because they're supposed to be the easy questions. So a transverse wave is a wave in which the particles of the medium, so if it's air or water, whatever, those particles vibrate at right angles or 90 degrees to the direction of motion of the wave. So if the wave is going left or right, the particles are going up or down. Okay. 2.2.1, name two points that are in phase. So remember, in phase means that they are separated by an integer number of wavelengths. So if we look at the diagram that I have over here, We've got this, this, and this. Those would be in phase, but we have no labels for these, so that's not going to help. All the troughs are in phase, but again, we don't have a label for that. We have A and we have C. Those are in phase. So A is a point over here just before I get to the crest. C is a point over here just before I get to the crest. So this would be A and C. You have to give me both because they want two points that are in phase. You have to give it to me in a pair. Name B. B is what we call a trough. And then they want D. D is what we call a crest. So this would be trough and D would be crest. In 2.3.1, they want the amplitude of the wave in meters. So amplitude, remember, is the maximum displacement of a particle from its equilibrium or rest position. So that would be the amplitude, this distance over here or this distance over here. They give me this full distance here as being 20 centimeters. So that means half of that distance. So half of 20 or 20 divided by 2, that would give me my amplitude. But they want it in meters, so you need to convert centimeters to meters, you need to divide by 100 for me because there's 100 centimeters in a meter so therefore in meters we've got 0, 0,1 meter amplitude then they want the wavelength of the wave so the wavelength is the distance between two consecutive points in phase so we're going to be looking at a horizontal distance here remember amplitude we look at vertical distance up down that's why for amplitude i looked at this one for wavelength, I look at a horizontal distance, and the information that I have that could help me with that would be this four meters over here. But remember, a wavelength is the distance between two consecutive points in phase. So what do I have here? I have from A to C. How many waves are between A and C? We've got one wave. And if you look again, that's one wave. We've got two two waves between A and C. So two waves is four meters. So how long would one wave be? Because that would be a wavelength, one wave. One wave would be two meters. Another way to do it is you can say how many waves are between A and C. We've got two waves. You take the distance that they give you. So four meters divided by two waves. And that gets me my wavelength. So it's going to be two meters then they want the period of the wave remember period is represented by t if we look at the formulas that we have at our disposal we will see that we are looking at this formula because we're looking for t which is period that is period and we are given f which is frequency so what you'll do for me is you'll say okay cool they want period that's my formula we are given frequency, which is 1,5. It's given over here. 1 divided by 1,5. That is 0, 0,66666 recurring. If I round it off to two decimal places, 0, 0,67 seconds. Please don't write sec. It's S. They might um, take off marks if you say sec. So formula is one mark. Substitute is a second mark. And answer with unit is your third mark. This question wants the speed of the wave. So if we look at our formulas, we want speed, which is V. We have the frequency and we have the wavelength. 
So that's what we do. We use. We use speed is equal to frequency times wavelength. Our frequency is 1,5 hertz. And our wavelength, remember, we just calculated our wavelength in the previous question. It was 2 meters. So 1.5 times 2, our speed is 3 meters per second. Formula, substitution, answer with units. If you like this video and you want to see more past paper examples and more teacher tips, let me know what you want to see exactly in the comments below. I can't wait to see you in a new video and I hope you subscribe for more videos like this. Goodbye, everybody.